Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing coming to you with another tutorial. This is Mixed Media 101, Episode 4. And today we're going to be playing with this new product that I've that I purchased. I have a lot of golden products. They're very very artist quality mixed media supplies. This is called fiber paste and um, the description says it's an opaque medium that dries to fibrous texture and I want to show you I played with it. I watched a video um, I kind of did a search on YouTube um, about how people use fiber paste and so I'll link that video down below so you guys can see it but um, she basically used it and just um, put it out on a surface and then peeled it up kind of like an acrylic skin would like you know when acrylic paint dries really really hard and you can peel it off so that's one of the things that we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how I layered it onto a piece of plastic here but I also will talk to you a little bit about my my uh, brown mat here it worked on there as well because it's a, a silicone uh, mat so I think it's silicone I don't know but anyway every, anything comes off of it um, the person I watched recommended that you don't do it on like a fancy like um, acetate or something it will not peel off of acetate so this is just a piece of packaging just something that you would normally throw in the trash so I'll show you how to use that but um, the, and the other beautiful thing that I loved about this is usually golden products are very very expensive this was just over $15 for eight ounces and I've done quite a bit with it already and I still have that much so and let me show you what I have done hopefully give you a little bit of context. I did pick some dies because we're going to actually die cut some because I'm going to show you what that looked like. I used a die cut on this one but it's got, I don't know if you guys can see on camera, that porous surface. Um, I'll show you a sample here in a second that you might be able to see better. I'm going to also try it on a piece of digital just to kind of see what it would look like to um, put it on there and then um, come back I'd have to show you in another video or show you in the photos or something. I'm not sure how that's going to work. I might not do that today because I'm not going to be able to show you the results, but I'll probably play with that offline and just see how I like it. I'm just kind of swatching it on like I do with my texture paste and see what kind of results we get as far as texture. So this is the first one I played with. I just ripped a piece of it off and I did some stamping on it. You can see that stamping. And then I also put a raw umber glaze on it. And then I came over the texture with some gold, iridescent gold fine. Can you see that? Thankfully, that is actually showing pretty well. So you can see we've got thin spots that gave um, a lot of um, holes, which I think adds to this beautiful in a cluster or just on a page. I mean, it's the possibilities to me seem endless. I'm going to reach and grab my stamps now that I'm thinking about the fact that we stamped that. So I'm just going to grab my, these are what I call my grab and go stamps. They're for um, grabbing and going. <laughs> so um, this is the other one that I did. Same process. This one I added. I did a one of um, Lorna Taylor's stamps and I I added a little bit of pink. I don't know if you guys can see there's little bits of pink just because I wanted to see how that would look. And then again came over it with the gold. But you can see it's got kind of that same I'm trying to po point at it right there. It's got that same effect boy oh boy that we get with texture paste where it's got kind of a hole there um, and I think that's really interesting but I want to show you what the back looks like not one like that that's got a bunch of stuff on it but this is the one I did right after and you can see I didn't go very thick I would recommend that you go thicker um, especially if you're going to do die cutting but this is the back of it so it's it's shiny and it's plastic feeling almost like leather and um, it and it only took um, not even 24 hours to completely dry so that was really cool too um, to get this effect in only one day but um, this one's pretty thin so I'm not probably going to use that for um, for die cutting but let me show you a thicker application so this is one that you can see I did oh this is the one I did on this mat because I wanted to see if it would pull up and it was like boom no problem and you can see this one is much thicker and so we're definitely going to use that with a die, but it's not super thick. So I hope you guys can see the profile of that. It's, it's pretty darn thin. And then this is another swatch that I did a little bit thicker. Um, 
and yeah in most spaces other than down here but I think this is a, a cool effect down here as well so and then I just I added some of my quinacridone Nicolazo gold and a little bit of that iridescent gold fine which you can't see the iridescent gold fine I don't think in it at all but it just gives a, a nice kind of starting color so we're going to play around with both of these really quick um, debating on what I want to do here Oh, let me show you how you put it on the paper. So let's take this off. Let's take this off. We don't need that on the plastic. So I want to show you what it looks like on the mat. So this is just one of the Ranger mats, craft mats, and it was it worked like a charm. So I'm gonna just gonna dip in here. They do recommend that you use not like a palette knife like I normally use where I'm scooping like this, but you want something that's just really gonna be kind of give you an even pressure everywhere because you're you're gonna see this in a second, but where you how you swipe is what's gonna create some of the effect in here so like that you can see how we've got higher texture there and so we're going to play around with that here I'm not going to do a very big swatch because I've already used quite a bit of this but I do want to show you okay so I'm just painting it on like so and so see how it kind of changes its formation as you brush okay we're going to do a little bit more because I do not want that to be too thin Okay, kind of hard to get it off at the end of the silicone brush though. So see how we can create some texture. I think these would be this would be beautiful in like clusters and stuff like that. You could even do things like belly bands with this. It would be so epic. I just feel like the possibilities are endless. So I'm going to do a little bit more texturizing here by kind of pressing and lifting. I don't want high, high peaks, but I do want some variation in the texture. So I feel like that is perfect right there. Okay, and I'm just gonna let this dry. It's not gonna dry before we're done, but that's okay. So I'm gonna set that aside. So that's just my personal business, guys. I know some of you follow those things, and so I thought I would let you know. So I didn't grab my um, matte medium, so we need that to make our glaze, don't we? So I've got my lip Liquitex fluid matte medium. I've got my uh, raw umber. So we're going to start with stamping though. Didn't even get my stamp. I am all discombobulated. My apologies guys. <sighs> I tried it with the um, vintage photo but it was just not not dark enough. So let me see what we've got in here. Oh this cracked stamp would be really cool but we'll do some script first before we do that. So actually I'd like this one. So I'm just going to stamp here and there on this surface. I'm going to get my fingers all yucky. I don't want the whole impression. Oh, perfect. That's awesome. So being in the studio is always good for me. It's beautiful outside. I did uh, do put a little bit of more uh, textiles in some coffee, so that's out on the deck getting nice and saturated while I'm in here. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, let's get a little bit more down here. And a little bit here. I think we'll do the stamping on the yellow too, just kind of knock that all out at one time. Perfect. Perfecto. Okay. I feel like we need something else in there, but we can go in with this um, crack stamp. This is really, really cool. Um, I think I got it on Amazon, but it's been ages. I think I've probably had this for four or five years, so I'm not sure if you can find it. But I'm just going to press again, not consistently. And that's not picking up great on that texture. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. We're not stamping on a, a solid surface here, so we're we're not going to get a good good impression. Perfect. I feel like that is good enough right there. Oh, I didn't get paint off of this or texture paste or something, so I'm gonna 
want to pick that up. It's st sticking a little bit, but that's just because it's plastic on the bottom. And let's go ahead and do some on this one as well. So let's see what we've got here. I'm going to find some of, my, some of my favorites. This is one of them. I feel like that's enough of that one. Let's get some, some letters on here or some numbers. I've got those right here. My um, melted stamp. That's really pretty, really bold. I think that's a really good choice on this uh, surface. Very, very bold. Perfect. Let's do the alphabet two here. You could put anything on here. We could have done the Lorna stamp again, one of her stamps, but I just grabbed these, so that's what we're doing, doing today. Okay, I feel like that's good as well. So this is archival ink that I just used, so I don't need to worry about uh, drying or anything. So let's put both of these out. We're gonna do a raw umber glaze on both. And so I'm just gonna pull this one over as well again. Is this the one I wanted? I thought I had another white piece. What did I do with that? Oh, there it is. I don't want this one right now, the thin one. Perfect. So in order to make a glaze, in case you haven't seen me do that, you want to, um, whatever, I use raw, raw umber fluid acrylic, but you could use any uh, acrylic paint that you want. It doesn't have to be artist acrylic, it can be anything. Um, the recipe is the same. It's one part paint to two parts of either glazing medium or matte medium, fluid matte medium. So I have a, uh, that was way too much. I have a um, subscriber friend who um, bought some something else and I haven't heard back. She was gonna try it anyway. I haven't heard back about how that went. So um, so I'm looking forward to hearing what her results are using what she what she ended up getting. So I'm just finding, trying to get a soft brush here. Okay, I'm gonna mix that up. So that was way too much, goodness gracious. It's always what I'm doing. You could also, oh, you know what we should do? We should run this little piece through the embossing machine and see what the embossing does um, with an embossing folder. I might do that. Okay, so we're just gonna do a glaze over this whole thing. I'm just gonna do the second one as well and then we'll wipe off. I think this will really tone down that yellow um, and hopefully we'll lift some of it so that we get some of the yellow color back because obviously that would have been a wasted wasted energy but we should be able to lift it back I'm hoping there I didn't put a matte medium layer uh, between the um, glaze and the paint base here on this texture but we'll see it's an experiment we'll see how it goes okay so there we go nice and covered and beautiful. Grabbing some whites here and I'm just going to kind of pat like so. I think I want a little bit more back on this one. Lift it a little bit too much. But it did lift just like a normal glaze does that I do so that's good to know. Okay, and I'm just gonna go a little bit gentler with that so I leave a little bit more of that color. I mean, we want to lift enough that we can see our stamping though, that's the, the balance. So I might have to go back to a little bit lighter version here. I think I'd like to try maybe some turquoise or something on top of a piece of this so that we can see what a color would look like as an accented on that. Texture. I'm just going to lift that up and I'm going to get it out of my way for the moment. 
And we're going to do the same here. Oh, this is very pretty. I really like that uh, Nicolazo gold under there. I'll show this for it to you in a second. And it pushed it back and down, which I felt like it was way too bright, but this definitely did the trick. So look at that. I mean, just like this, just used like this. You tear it up and put it in on your ephemera is absolutely stunning absolutely stunning so I'm gonna bring back this one uh, actually let me bring them both back because I think we need to give them a quick a quick dry before we um, go on so give me just a moment okay it would be cool to have like a whole sheet like this just in white um, hanging around a couple of those that you could just pull out for a project and and do whatever you you want with it I need to stick this in some water right here in my little a little cup. I don't want that to get dried out. Okay, so on this one, actually, oh, I'm, I'm so undecided. <laughs> I think I'm going to tear this one. So it just tears just like paper. It's just amazing. Oops, we got a little bit of a hang up there. Probably just the way that that texture got built in, but that's okay. I just want two ch uh, more choices on what we're doing here. So I'm going to do the same with this. I'm just going to take a bit off of this one. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to try getting some um, cobalt turquoise on this one because I really love that that bit that's really sticking up right here. That's a layer of that texture, that fiber paste. But you can see the fibers. I mean, that's what's so crazy. Is it just, it looks like, uh, it almost looks like fabric. It's epic. <laughs> epic. I don't even know what made me buy. I honestly don't remember what, ma what made me want to try it. I don't know. Because I didn't look up a video until after I had, um, I had already bought it. So, I don't know. So we're just going to get some turquoise on there. I just want to be able to highlight that texture, show you what I mean. And what it really looks like when you add some paint on it. It's very cool. Very, very cool. I should hold that up for you. Look at that. That's amazing. Gorgeous. So we're going to let that one dry for a minute. And then we're going to think about what we want to do. I think on this piece, I'd like to go over this. Not go over it, but um, highlight it with some of the raw. Oh, you know what? The paint's gray. That's what I was thinking I wanted to do was the Payne's Gray. So let's do this piece with the Payne's Gray because that I can use it in my the winter journal. Winter Wonder number two. I'm just going to get a little bit of Payne's Gray out here on my table. This needs to be plugged. Oh man, that was a lot. Dog on it. Okay. It's okay. Okay, so I'm just going to do that. And I'm just, I'm using very, very little pressure, you guys. This one has a lot of texture. This was, um, I added a lot more swoops and hills and valleys when I put this on um, and let it dry. So we're getting some different effect here. We might get spots that are, you know, getting to the base and not, not the highlight, but that's okay. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I think I'll put some silver on this one on top of that texture as well. So cool. Look at that. It's just delicious. So you can see all the fibers in it. No wonder why it's called fiber paste. That's all those dots you see are the fiber. Obviously these bigger bits are where where we got some, you know, a little bit of a hill, but that's really cool. And so let's get this one over here as well. Let's see what do we want to 
what do we want to try on this one? I think I want to just do this one with some raw umber. Now I'm not going to do the glaze because it's not going to have the same effect as just the straight up raw umber paint. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this out. We may have to use that up on something here in a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to dip into that as well. Okay, and I'm, I have barely any on my finger. But you guys, for Golden Products, this was a really, this was a good deal. Like, Golden Products are expensive. And I just got it off of Amazon, so I will link it. I know that for some of you, that's not something that you necessarily can just go out and do, but you can put it in your your arsenal of ideas and of things you might want to try in the future. So this one doesn't have as many as many peaks as the other ones did. It's okay. I'll hold it up for you. Look at that. It's just absolutely amazing, if I do say so myself. So what do we want to add to this yellow one? I almost want to come in with the turquoise on this. Oh, I already did turquoise. I'm just going to peek behind me. You know what? Should we try some of this green gold? I pulled it out for purpose. Maybe we should try it. Why not? If we don't like it, we'll wipe it up right away, okay? This is very transparent, so we'll see what we get. Oh, that's really pretty. Oh, I actually love that. Green gold is one of my favorite colors in not only acrylic, but watercolor. So cool. So, so cool. Got some really, really cool peaks in this one that are very, very neat. So I'll hold that one up for you too. Look at that. That is just amazing. Okay, so give me a moment to dry these and wipe up my table and we'll come back and we'll do some die cutting. Okay, so I forgot that I wanted to go over these with um, a little bit of silver, maybe some gold. So I'm just reaching in my drawer to see if I can find those. There we go. So I want silver on the, um, the winter one. So we're going to just squirt a little bit of this out. I'm going to put it kind of over here, a little bit more out of my way. Okay, we're just going to go lightly over that, see what we get. Oh man, that's beautiful. Woo! Look at that. Just the right touch. I don't know how well it picks up on camera, but it's really beautiful in person, so there's that, and then um, I think I want to go over this one with some gold and this one with some brown, some of the raw umber. I should have done that before I wiped that up. I did, um, I did sop a bunch of that up on a piece of paper, so just so you know, I didn't waste it. <laughs> so there we go, just a smidge of that raw umber. I need to get another bottle, that one's getting empty. It's my most used paint. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on my finger again. And I wanted brown on this one, just to kind of highlight those high points again, give it some dimension. Like so. So beautiful. love it okay so we didn't really do much with this maybe we'll just go in with some gold on this one 
on these two. So I'm just going to again put a little bit of this out. So I'm pretty far ahead on my videos, so this is actually still being filmed in March, so this video won't won't uh, probably publish until the first week in April, so I'm a little... I needed to do this today. I needed to get messy because my heart is feeling messy, and so this always makes me feel better. So there we go. <laughs> Look at that! <gasps> oh my gosh. You guys, it's amazing. Oh, it's amazing. Okay, so one more, and then we'll be ready to give it another quick zap dry, and then we'll do some. We'll, we'll really, really do some, some die cutting, so maybe a little embossing. We'll see. So just trying to hit the high points mainly. I don't want to get a whole lot on the base, so you kind of can visually see where your high points are and avoid some of the lower points if you don't want gold everywhere. But it always turns out no matter what, so I don't worry about it. Kind of get it around that edge. So beautiful. Oh my gosh. This is an epic thing. This is epic. Okay, I'm going to wipe those up. It was just a little bit of that silver. It didn't get used mainly. Okay. So, um, so I need to dry these really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, I had to take a quick picture of those first before we start cutting them up. I feel kind of like it's a tragedy, but we're here to play. So I've got my sidekick because I don't want to bring the big machine over, which probably means we won't do embossing on this unless I can see visually where my small... I have one die for the, I don't think I like it though. I have one die that fits this, but, or not die, but embossing folder. So I have a few things I'd like to try. So I have a heart, I have these feathers from Tim Holtz, and some smaller flowers, and then some butterflies. So I thought these would be some fun things to try. Not these intricate ones, but these ones here on the other side. So let me pull one of those out, and... I do the little one as well and then um, let's see about some flowers we'll do pull that one out and we'll see what we want to use I'm not sure at the moment I don't really want one that has a lot of holes though in, in the wrong shape so um, because it's going to cut out everything like this one I don't know I don't know. Maybe we won't focus on the flowers. This let's try this one. It doesn't have as many holes. And then um, the feathers. So let's see what we've got for feathers here. Feathers would be really cool. So let's do three feathers. I don't know how this is going to work. I only did the one, um, the one die, and it did get stuck a little bit in there, and it tore. Uh, there's a bit over here that the edge got torn when I pulled it out, but we're still going to give it a try. So this is really cool because it's just perfect for fitting on your desk and you, it suctions to your desk by pushing that down. So I love it. Okay, so now we need to get a piece of this. So what do we want to cut our heart out of? Actually, I think I want to cut my heart out of this one. Or not my heart, my big butterfly. We didn't texturize, I mean, we didn't um, do any paint on this one. I forgot about it, so I'll probably do that off camera. But I do kind of want it to be kind of messy. I'm going to turn it so I don't have to waste any of that material. Hopefully you guys can see that. I think I've got it all in there. We'll see. Yeah, should be good. Okay, I'm going to run that through. Probably gonna run this back through again because it's pretty thick. Pretty thick. Uh, this this uh, piece was the base was really thick. The texture. 
so we might even go through one more time. So that's three times through. Let's see what we got here. Hopefully it's going to work. That's stuck. Got a bunch of that on my thing. Wonder if this was not quite dry. I don't think this had been 24 hours, you guys. Now that I'm thinking about it. Not a problem. I'm not gonna throw any of these bits away though. I think this one was too wet. That was my bad, you guys. Let me see if I can find a palette knife to try to peel that off a little bit. This one I think I just did in the evening last night, so it really is not 24 hours. So it feels like it's a little bit wet, but that's okay. We're gonna continue on. So I'm just trying to run it all the way underneath there to get all the, the butterfly parts. Oh, I'm getting a hole in there. Yeah, this was not smart. <laughs> I did not wait long enough. I forgot that when I did this one. Let me see if I can go put this way and not poke through. Can I do that? Yeah. Still gonna have a hole in it. That's okay. It can be grungy. A grungy holy butterfly. <laughs> so I'm just trying to pick that up. Come on. This is not how it would work if I had let this dry, guys. So just so you know. But isn't that amazing? Simple. Simple. And I think that's actually gonna add to the add to the beauty of it. So we need to get this cleaned off. So I'll be right back. Okay. I got it cleaned off. That was a big mistake. That was just me forgetting which when I had done that one. So my apologies. So let's go ahead and do, I'm not sure what I want. I think maybe I want to do a butterfly on this as well. So I'm going to tear this here because it has to be able to fit on the plate. So that seems okay. I'm going to get that that scraggly bit off. I'm not throwing that away. But guys, this feels like a it feels like an acrylic skin. It's it's actually pretty pretty cool. I don't know if you guys are like you know how you used to paint your paint your hands with um with uh Elmer's glue and then wait for it to dry and peel it off. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of go over here with that. Maybe I'll do um let's go ahead and do this flower. We're just playing guys. We're just playing. So let's do those and hope this should be fine. That This is nice and dry. So I'm going to bring that back in. I'm going to run it through twice. Let's see what we get. And this is going to be the test as to whether or not I, the, these are, need more time to dry or not. So that's pulling off just fine. So look at that. Beautimous. Let's just peel that off the back. Again, I'm not going to throw this away. So I think this could stand to dry longer because we are die cutting it. Just for your information. I think it would be beneficial to give it a longer dry time. So, boy, that's tough. Okay, there we go. It's all an experiment. Hopefully I can poke these out. Try to get a, find a place I can get a hold of it. There we go. Hopefully we can get this off without tearing it. Yeah, that this was this needed more time to dry. Uh, I just ruined that one. Okay, so we are not going to do any more of this because I don't want to ruin the other skins. They need more time to dry. So, um, so I I'll probably will do the rest off camera. Um, let's see if we can get this one out before I before I um, stop the video um, by using my little pokey tool and see if we can salvage this one. I think it's just enough tacky that it's sticking too much. So I might try the feathers off camera, but I don't want to ruin the skin. So I'm going to probably wait another 
another 24 hours but if I do it I'll put the the um, photos in the end of the video and I'll, I'll make a note uh, you know a, a text note on the video so come on yeah it's too wet too soft I don't know if it gets harder you know I should have I should have experimented with this better this is sticking all to heck in that yeah that's not gonna work okay well we know so this one came out fine and I'm trying to think I think this was off the first skin that I did so this probably had had 48 72 hours to dry which is probably why I did not have trouble with this one so um, so lesson learned we won't we won't be doing that again but I will use some pieces of this and I'll do some of the feathers and maybe a flower or two off camera and I'll show you the results at the end of the video sorry for that guys um, I will see you in the next video take care bye bye okay friends I just decided to go ahead and turn the camera on and show you what I did again and I want to walk you through it so I did three of the feathers um, I had to toss one of the die cuts I did because it actually stuck and I think what's happening is it's actually imprinting and cutting into the plate and which is why I can't release the material when it's directly on the plate with nothing in between it so um, so what I did on I can't remember which one I did it on I put a piece of plastic in between so I want to go through that with, with you really quick. So bear with me a moment. So let's see what we've got over here. I'm getting to the really thin stuff. So um, it's, it's going to be harder to work with the thinner it is. So I'll do more of this with my other bigger pieces um, in the future. But I'm just kind of tearing this down a little bit to get it thinner, narrower rather. Okay. And I'm going to use this piece of plastic. So this is the actual one I did my first sample on of, of drying that stuff out. So we're going to just set that on there. And um, what do we want to use this time? Shall we keep using the feathers? Let's pull, pull a different one out. Where's the, where's the feathers? Here's the feathers. I don't want to keep doing the same ones. I wouldn't do a super intricate die, to be honest. I think that you'd be asking for trouble. This one would be pretty, would probably be cool. So let's try that one, okay? So again, it's sandwiched between, it's the plate, a piece of very, very thin, like that cellophane that you're, that's all over your packaging, and then the die, and then the top plate. We're gonna go ahead and run that through again. So, okay. Sorry, I did open my shade after I turned off the last segment, so I apologize if it's too bright. I'm going to run that through again. We will definitely be doing this again, guys. I absolutely love it. Okay, so there. Now our, our packaging helped it not to um, cut into the plate, so I can actually pull that whole thing off. Oh, look at that whoa look at that that worked like a charm now this is a little bit thin and it looks like some of the plastic is is trying to stick to the the material but that's okay maybe it's the plastic on the plastic it's struggling with but i say this is a win win look at that i will probably colorize these a little bit um, and then put them in the photos at the end of the video so again, I'm not going to throw away these little scraps, but they're too small to use for, for what I'm doing today. So the problem is, is I've cut into both these pieces of plastic and I don't know that I have any more. Um, oh yeah, I have this. I have the big one. Ugh, this one here. So let me get a piece of this. I won't be throwing any of my plastic away anymore. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, so we can trim this down once we get it in place here. So actually, let's do that now. So I'm just going to take my scissors and cut around the plate. Cut this down to size a little bit, roughly. And that was a rough cut. It's all right. 
It's all good. Boy, this is just what my, my heart needed today, you guys, just to play and get messy and not worry about anything else in the world right now. Okay, so what do we want to try here? I've got another good piece here. So let's let's do one of the hearts. I think I pulled a heart out, didn't I? And above the small butterfly. <clears throat> Is the heart too big? I think the heart might be. It's gonna be a little bit a little bit fragile in the center, but that's okay. So let's go with that. I'm gonna run this through the machine. I'm going to run it through twice. Okay. So see how it's cutting right through the plastic too, which is okay. It's a sacrificial piece of plastic that's making this actually work. So the plastic is still on the back of this. It, it might come off over time, I'm not sure. So I'm just gently using my, my thumb to press that out. Okay, oh, that plastic will come off. Boom, right there. Boom, yay. <laughs> oh, that's so fun, and I love that this is so thin. It actually uh, works just fine. You, again, you probably would have trouble with a more intricate die, but I think that's really cool got a little hole in the center <laughs> okay so let's do one more one more on camera actually let's grab this piece this is a good one let's see if we can find another piece of plastic here we could probably use this again and just keep our die up here on the top section so we'll put that there well, let's do our butterfly. <clears throat> so fun. This is amazing. I'm, my mind is going to be popping with ideas about how to use this material. Okay, again, we're going to run it through a second time. That plastic was the key. Okay, boom. Oh, let's go. Boy, that's not coming. It's coming off completely different than the last time. So let's just separate that. That cut beautifully. Most makes me wonder if thinner is better. You guys will have to try it and let me know what you think. But look at that. A perfect, perfect butterfly. Sweet. Okay, now we are done. So I will colorize those extra pieces just so you guys can, uh, and I might run some other things through the machine, uh, but I'm going to wait for all that stuff to dry a little bit more, um, like I mentioned before. But I will see you in the next video, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.